students. Uh, today I'm uh, going to take you through uh, CHT 1305, uh, that is Travel Geography and uh, Computer Reservation. My name is uh, Anthony Gariavo from the School of uh, Hostility, uh, Travel and Tourism Management from the Department of Travel and Tourism uh, Management. Uh, our, our topic today, we are going to look at uh, touristic destination. And uh, the objectives uh, that we shall exp uh, exploit today, one is to understand the meaning and characteristics of uh, touristic destination. And then number two, we shall describe the touristic destination of the world. Uh, possibly we shall look at examples and even go further and look at examples even in our own uh, country, Kenya. So let's look at the first uh, important uh, aspect of today. What is the meaning of touristic destination? Um, a tourist destination is normally an area, a place or locality uh, which has characteristics or features that normally compel or motivate uh, tourists to uh, go to visit that place. And we normally have two dynamics that normally uh, interplay in this uh, situation of movement. We normally have the country where the tourists come from. It is normally called the generating country. Uh, for example, uh, a tourist coming from America, it means that America becomes the generating country. So these uh, tourists from America may decide to go to Africa. So the Africa becomes the hosting country. So the hosting country is this now the, uh, the country or the locality where uh, this tourist now goes to visit for uh, different purposes. And this is now the place where he's going to spend his, uh, he spend his uh, uh, time that is overstay uh, away, from the, uh, away from home or from, from the domicile. So that's the meaning of touristic destination. Now which are the types of touristic destination? Uh, one, we have center destination. And when you talk about center destination, this is normally a specific place where this uh, tourist uh, will spend most of the time. And then you find that this place has uh, the, uh, the, the sites of interest very near. So meaning that this tourist will go visit a, a, a different kind of a, 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 a place that is nearby for, uh, for excursion but still will go back to the same same point, meaning that there's an aspect of going back to the original point. Uh, it can be uh, maybe within uh, a, a hotel, but in the same same specific place. Now, we, have, we also have multi-centered destination. And when you talk about multi-centered multi destinations, this can be, uh, this, this is a destination where we have two or more si uh, 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 sites, uh, attraction sites that are equally important. And you find that, in uh, multi-center destinations, these two sites have uh, uh, similar uh, interests that uh, make these uh, tourists uh, maybe to uh, co-join those two places during the tour. We also have transit destination. And in transit, when we talk about transit, transit is movement. Now you find that in transit destination, these are normally uh, places where, where uh, uh, we normally have stopover. That is before the final uh, uh, end of the journey or the destination is reached. Like, for example, if you look at a uh, uh, journey to uh, the city of Mombasa from Nairobi, we normally have a, a stopover at um, Titwande. So Titwande becomes a transit destination. And then if you talk about uh, movement from uh, Nairobi to uh, probably uh, Eldoret, the, tra the, the transit destination then becomes uh, Nakuru. So the place where we normally have stopovers becomes the transit destination. Now, we have touring destination. We have touring uh, destination. When we talk about touring destinations, I can simply say that these are not areas that are normally included in the itinerary. However, during the journey, you find that uh, the tourists may decide to stop at a given kind of a place and maybe take photos. Uh, like, for example, uh, if you look at your journey to a place like Masai Mara, I know Masai Mara is in Narok, uh, so maybe on your way from Nairobi to Narok, a person may decide to stop at uh, Mahi Mahiu and then take photos. So this becomes 
a touring destination, meaning it is not part of the itinerary. However, it becomes a special kind of a point that uh, maybe this person may decide to, to maybe break a bit, take photos, but it is not planned according to the itinerary. So this becomes a touring destination. Now, there's another uh, category of destination called the best destination. The best destination is not, is, has similar features to the center destination. However, the difference between the best destination and uh, the center destination is that you find that uh, there's, uh, we, we have uh, attraction sites that are normally at a central kind of a point. However, this uh, tourist may decide to go to the next attractions, uh, maybe attraction site, but uh, there's no need to come back to the, or, uh, 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 to the original point. But, however, we have similar kind of uh, destinations um, that have similar kind of features. So, meaning that during that kind of a, a, a movement uh, in, in, in base destinations, you find that uh, the attractions on the surrounding have similar features, but this person will go to a, diff, uh, a, a, a similar uh, site to, uh, to, uh, to a different point, but he will not necessarily go back to the uh, not, uh, not necessarily go back to the, uh, this, uh, the same point of origin. But in the center destination, you find that there's a specific uh, a point where the tourists may decide to go to attraction sites nearby, but after that, this person go back to the hotel, uh, to the original point where he's, uh, he, uh, uh, he is uh, attached to as a, as, a, as, a, as a point that he will prefer to be maybe spending or uh, 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 talk about uh, he'll be connected to the other sites uh, while he's on, um, uh, he's on his tour. So that's the difference between the two. Now let's look at the characteristics or the components of touristic destination. Now what, is, uh, what are we uh, interested in in the components of the characteristics? What are the features or uh, uh, what are the factors, uh, factors that may, want, uh, may, may make a given kind of a place to make tourists to, to be motivated to visit this kind of a place? So which are these factors? So we have attractions, then we have culture, talk about the culture of the place, uh, talk about accessibility, accommodation, and then we have climate, or talk about weather, talk about the cost of living, or the affordability, and then amenities, we have infrastructure, we have superstructure, as well as the target market. The target market. Now, let's look at the first uh, let's look at the first component, attraction. What is an attraction? What is an attraction? Um, something uh, that appeals or something that makes, uh, that, 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 um, uh, is, um, that makes a, a person to want to see it more. I can talk about the appealing, the, the appealing concept of, of, a, of an item becomes an attraction. So attractions are normally appealing factors, and uh, these are the ones that motivate a person to uh, make a choice to want to visit a, a, a given destination. Uh, based on the typologies of attraction, I can say that att attractions can be categorized into two with respect to uh, uh, various kind of uh, various kind of basis. One, we have uh, the first uh, category is primary versus secondary attraction primary versus secondary attraction. Anything primary, it is the core reason as to why a person decides to travel. So uh, when I talk about primary, primary is all about it is the core or the main reason or the main appealing kind of a, a, a factor that makes a person wants to, uh, to want to go to visit a given kind of a destination. So if I talk about primary attraction, I can say that these are the main attraction that makes a person to travel, and these are the main ones that uh, that may make a one to sacrifice and spend uh, to spend money and to spend time. It doesn't matter how expensive, but that is the core business or the core attraction that this make this a person uh, to want to go to. For example, uh, I can say this person maybe wants to go uh, uh, to, to come to Kenya and explore on the uh, Rift Valley of Kenya. So meaning that this person will spend uh, most of the time around the Rift Valley, uh, uh, where we have the Rift Valley uh, feature, and uh, he will spend all his money so long as he has fulfilled the purpose to see uh, the uh, Rift Valley in Kenya. So uh, talk about the primary attraction. 
And then we have secondary. We have secondary. Uh, I can talk about secondary. Secondary attraction, these are, uh, 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 are places that uh, are normally visited while on the way to the, uh, to the primary attraction. Meaning these are not the core, uh, the core attraction that make a person travel. However, as the person goes to, see the, uh, to, to the primary attraction, this person may encounter uh, other attractions that uh, he finds on the way. So these are called secondary attractions. So one aspect about secondary attractions, uh, some, I can say sometimes they are advantageous simply because they help to, to, uh, they help, uh, they help to give a, a kind of a break while this person is on the journey to uh, the main attraction. And then uh, I can talk about, um, in terms of the secondary attraction, I can say that they are normally good solutions, especially for uh, a person or an individual uh, who was not given... Uh, who was not given, uh, uh, who was not uh, maybe, maybe had in, in the process of planning. I know during the process of planning, some people may say, please, as you go, you may visit one of, one of these places. And maybe the other groups may say, no, we want to focus on a given kind of a, an attraction. So you can see, one aspect about secondary attraction, they normally help to consider those who are not given a chance to uh, maybe give the suggestions or not to visit uh, when planning for, when planning for, uh, when planning for the tour. So at least this automatically becomes a uh, secondary attractions. They normally aid these people to be considered in the process so that at the end of it all, they are to go maybe to, they were to go to, uh, they're supposed to go to, uh, they're supposed to go to, um, uh, the, uh, talk about, for example, Lake Bogoria as, a, as, a, as the uh, main point of an attraction. However, en route, you find that this person automatically may uh, get the chance of uh, of stopping over at a, at a, at Ma, at Mai Mayu, so automatically it becomes uh, a, a good point for the people who, for the person who was not considered uh, during the uh, during the planning. One aspect about secondary secondary attraction, they are not the key reason as to why people are traveling, and because of that, the normally uh, time taken on this attraction is normally very brief or very short because it is not the main uh, the uh, the main thing on there. Uh, uh, on the agenda of the tour. Now, we, we have another typology, uh, a way of categorization of the natural attractions. We have natural versus man-made attractions. Now, what are natural attractions? Anything natural automatically exists on its own, and it exists without any intervention of, uh, of man, so it becomes natural. Uh, which, uh, if you look at them, Exam, uh, if you look at the examples of natural, uh, natural, uh, natural uh, attractions or, or the natural features, it has natural features. These uh, examples include the, if you look at uh, Yellowstone National Park that is in, uh, in, uh, in uh, North America or in uh, USA, we have the Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe, Galapagos Island, Ecuador, uh, the glaciers and iceberg in Greenland. We have Mount Kilimanjaro, it is in uh, Tanzania, Mount Everest in Nepal. These are natural features, examples of natural attractions. We have Grand Saban Plateau, that is Venezuela. And then we have the Great Barrier Reef, Australia, the Grand Canyon in USA. Talk about the wild beast migration, that is in the Masai Mara, uh, found in Kenya. And then you also have the wild beast migration still in Serengeti, in Tanzania. And that's why I put Kenya and Tanzania. So all of these represent natural attractions, and they are examples of natural, natural features. So other than natural, natural attractions, we have man-made or artificial attractions. And these ones are normally created by man. They're normally created by man. Which are the examples of the man-made attractions? Examples may include the Machu Picchu, that is in Peru. An old, uh, 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 it has ruins that represent an ancient city. Uh, and then you have the Colosseum in Rome. This automatically represents uh, a place where you used to have the sporting activity. And then we have the Great Wall of China, we have the Taj Mahal in India, the Christ, the Redeemer in Brazil, then uh, the Pyramid of Giza and, and Sphinx in Egypt, and then you have the Lamu Old Town in Kenya, Eiffel Tower, a very famous uh, icon in, uh, in France, Statue of Liberty in USA, we have the Walt Disney World in the USA, we have the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy, and then we have the Sydney Opera House in Australia. Those are the examples of uh, man-made attractions. 
Uh, I know in Kenya we can also have Fort Jesus is, is, a, is another example of uh, man-made attraction simply because it was made by the Portuguese. Now, what are the attributes of attraction? What are the attributes of attraction? Now, when we talk about the attributes, I look at the important elements that normally make attraction, uh, that normally makes uh, an attraction in a given place, it justifies. Why is it better than another one in a given kind of a locality? So let's look at the attributes. Which are the attributes? One, we look at the quality. Two, authenticity, or talk about how original is there. Uh, is this kind of an attraction? And then number three, we have the uniqueness. It's, on, it's, it's just one of its kind. That is, talk about the uniqueness of uh, that attraction. And then the drawing, or talk about the pulling power of the attraction. It's supposed to make people to be motivated to, 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 uh, to travel. And then you have activity options. There must be activities involved in a given kind of an attraction. So this uh, combination of elements makes an attraction to be considered better as compared to the others in a given kind of a uh, in a given kind of a locality let's look at quality when we talk about quality we talk about standards quality uh, automatically is intertwined in one kind of word standard how is the standard of these attractions found in this kind of destination in terms of how clean are they in terms of how safe are the visitors when they go to this kind of attractions that is quality how are the procedures in these attractions uh, when visitors come, what are the procedures of registration? What are the, uh, what are the uh, procedures of uh, talk about going and then starting to view this uh, attraction? Do we have order? Talk about standard. And then talk about resource protection. Is the resource protected or is it just accessed anyhow? People can manipulate and even destroy. So talk about uh, quality. Quality becomes a very important aspect with respect to uh, the attraction. And then how is the service around that kind of a, an attraction? Do we have friendly, uh, friendliness and hospitality? That also becomes important as pertains quality. And then let's look at authenticity. Anything authentic is original, and then it gives a true picture of what it is without adding or without modifying it. That is authenticity. Like, uh, for instance, if I talk about uh, uh, Mount Kenya, uh, that is in Kenya, one aspect about it is all about it is natural the way it is. It is not modified. There is no modification of adding uh, things to it. So meaning what? How it, be, how it existed, it is just the way it is without any kind of a change. Talk about uh, authenticity. And then uh, one aspect about the authenticity, it should automatically show uh, original or talk about the trueness, a true picture in terms of is it natural? Is it, uh, is the, is, is, is it expressing the, the culture, indigenous culture, the way it is? Is it... Uh, uh, is, is it um, promoting economic heritage of that community and maybe at the, th at the same, same time maintaining uh, that kind of a, uh, I can talk about uh, the, the culture of that kind of a place. Like if I talk about the Maasai culture, the Maasai culture is an attraction in Kenya. So one aspect about when uh, tourists come to Kenya, they'll want to, to, to find out, are these Maasai original in terms of how are the homesteads? How are they wearing? How are they living? So if these uh, Maasai automatically show an aspect about uh, maintaining of the culture in terms of dressing, in terms of everything, and then in terms of behavior, without uh, bringing in an aspect about modernization, then that becomes authentic. And then uniqueness. Uniqueness. In terms of uniqueness, it's all about some, uh, this kind of an appealing, uh, 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 appealing feature. It is the way it is. It's, on, it's one of its kind, and there is nowhere else you'll find it in another kind of a place as compared to a, a different kind of a locality. So talk about uniqueness. It should be unique, if I may uh, mention that. And then the pulling power or the drawing power, because the main thing about an attraction, it should be appealing. It should make a person pull. Wants to, uh, you should be motivated to go and, and, and travel to this kind of a place. So it must have the drawing power. And the drawing power is normally seen in terms of how many visitors want to go there. They're motivated. They want to go there. How many are they? And uh, what makes them to uh, want to go there? It's all about the drawing power. So it becomes very, very important. Um, and then you have the activity options. The activity options. And activities, what, uh, what to do in a given kind of a locality. So it should have a variety of, 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 of uh, things to do. 
so that one, one aspect about uh, different things to do in a, diff in a given kind of a site or an attraction automatically makes it uh, good to break uh, monotony or it breaks, uh, it breaks boredom. So one important aspect about activity in a destination uh, or uh, talk about in an, uh, one aspect about act activity in, a, in, a, in, a, in an attraction in a destination, uh, it is normally good, first of all, to look at what activities are there. Are there is there variety? Uh, no, I'm not saying variety. It is simply because if one kind of a, a, a thing is, uh, one kind of a, a, a activity is done once and then, and then for a, a talk about a more, more, more number of days, it becomes boring. And that is why it's good to have variety of activities. Now, uh, like for example, if you look at Hell's Gate National Park in Kenya, uh, maybe if I give an example of activity option, uh, I can say Hell's Gate is normally a park where people can walk. And then we have a variety of activities like uh, I talk about bike riding, and then you have hiking, and then you have mountain climbing, and then you have camping. You see, people automatically can do uh, different things at different kind of times uh, but not repeating, the, uh, repeating, re, uh, repeating these things. So you can see this automatically makes this attraction become better and better as compared to the other kind of places in Hell's Gate uh, National Park as an example. Now, uh, so this is uh, under activity, uh, activity uh, option. Now other than attraction, number two important uh, uh, component of a destination or characteristic is culture. And what is culture? Culture, in one word, is normally defined as the people's way of life. In terms of, we look at aspects that define people's way of life, like in terms of uh, food, architecture, uh, talk about religion, talk about the norms, the beliefs, how they dress, how they talk, the boundaries, arts, talk about customs, economic activities, those automatically tell us more about culture. Now, culture of a given kind of a destination can even go to the extent of, can go to the extent of how do the, uh, uh, in terms of the services, how do the service providers behave towards the visitors? That also automatically tells, it, it, it will go a long hand even to, to tell us more about culture. So culture in a given kind of destination can be the, ori the original people or the indigenous people in a given kind of a place uh, uh, who express culture in their lifestyle. And then number two also, talk about the service providers, those who uh, provide service in a given destination, they cannot tell us about their culture in terms of their hospitality. So talk about culture becomes very, very important. And why is culture important? It is simply because sometimes when you go to the countries where we have, uh, talk about the uh, Arab-based kind of countries, they automatically are cultures where uh, I know Christianity becomes, uh, 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 is not normally allowed very, very much in those kind of areas. So it's normally good to see how to carry out yourself. And then if you look at uh, an example of um, Lamu, Lamu is a good kind of a destination uh, in Kenya. Uh, if you go to Lamu, then they're, they're normally strict in terms of how do the women dress in those kind of places. So according to their culture, they normally um, uh, prefer women to wear long kind of clothing that covers their bodies. And that is how they normally, uh, that is how they normally operate. That's their lifestyle. So it means if uh, visitors go there, and their ladies, they have to change and adapt to the culture of that place to avoid bringing conflicts in the process of visiting those kind of places. So talk about culture. And then accessibility. Anything accessible, it is reachable using any available source of uh, transport or means, or transport means. So any destination that attracts tourists or is a touristic destination should have roads that are, that are accessible and then uh, they should have means of transport that is available or we, they should have means or variety, but all of them should make it possible for them to reach this kind of destination without interruption or without any kind of a problem. However, uh, sometimes in the accessibility it can give us, uh, there's normally controversy, simply because there are some people who normally will prefer destinations that have challenging terrain for them to access. Like for example, deserts. Some people normally uh, like visiting deserts simply because deserts are normally challenging. And that's why for them, the one pre prefer uh, having uh, challenges using the four-wheel drives kind of vehicle so that they can, uh, they, they can traverse and uh, overcome the challenge. For them, that is an attraction to them. And then others will have, will, uh, have muddy roads or even rocky kind of, uh, rocky kind of uh, 
uh, rocky kind of terrain, of which they normally prefer, if they have four-wheel drives, they, they see the challenge. How will I reach from point A to point B, overcoming the challenge of uh, difficult terrain? To them, it's an attraction. Then we have accommodation. When you talk about accommodation, is where people normally put up, in terms of where they, uh, where they sleep, uh, where they eat. And that's why I've mentioned this. Accommodation is normally wholly defined uh, where we have places where people put up, in terms of where they take food, where they, they, they take beverage, and where they sleep. And uh, I can say that in Kenya, we have a variety of accommodation units represented by hotels. We have resorts, we have cottages, bandas, tented camps, we have uh, motels, we have inns, apartments. Today, the current trend today in accommodation, we have homestays. Uh, talk about private houses are, are given out a list by people for homestays. And in homestays, I know today uh, it is a new current trend in uh, accommodation where a person uh, may decide to lease the house to the, uh, uh, to the tourist and then uh, shift the family to a, to a neighborhood to leave the house to this visitor for a given period of time. So homestay is a, an, a, is a, is a new trend in accommodation. And then climate. Climate is, uh, is, is all about the conditions of a given place. If you talk, talk about climate over a long period of time, and then weather is over a short period of time. Climate of a place will attract uh, visitors in the, in, the, in the following way. Let's look at two kind of uh, uh, two, uh, two kind of uh, uh, two kind of examples. According to the African uh, Africa, for example, Kenya is an example. You find that uh, we normally have tropical warm climate. This automatically makes it possible for people to enjoy activities such as swimming, talk about surfing, talk about snorkeling. While in uh, in the European kind of countries, they normally have uh, a winter kind of climate, very cold. But this does not mean that uh, something can't happen. They normally have uh, skiing as an activity that is normally done in this kind of in this kind of uh, in, in this kind of a uh, destination. So climate becomes important. However, I'll say this: whatever climate that attracts a given uh, touristic activity will attract the tourists in that kind of a locality. Now we have number six: cost of living. Talk about affordability. A tourist will go to a place where he can easily. Uh, uh, spend money that he can uh, make himself com comfortable and enjoy that kind of uh, enjoy that kind of a place. Different destinations normally offer different kind of uh, different kind of uh, different kind of prices in terms of uh, goods and services. Others will uh, will um, uh, will um, uh, avail uh, luxurious, expensive kind of goods. Like I know in Dubai is a good example of a destination. It has expensive kind of goods. Uh, where people uh, have to spend a lot. So high class will go to these places. And then where we have, uh, in other destinations, we have uh, very cheap, but quality kind of, uh, quality kind of goods. Good example is, uh, a good example is in Thailand. I know Thailand is a destination today is a, uh, is, um, uh, is a very, very important international touristic destination. However, it also has uh, very less expensive goods, but quality kind of goods. Uh, to the tourists that will want to go there. So this automatically attracts low-class spenders in that, kind of a, uh, in that kind of a locality. Then we look at amenities. We look at amenities. Amenities, what are amenities? Amenities, these are normally uh, facilities that are normally given to people so that they can create convenience, enjoyment, as well as comfort. Which are the examples of amenities? Examples of amenities normally include health clubs like the spas and the gyms, Talk about conference facilities, and then talk about banquet rooms, and then um, I can talk about uh, presence of libraries, cyber cafes. Those automatically are amenities. We have infrastructure. A good destination must have infrastructure. This are normally facilities that enhance uh, functionality of a given kind of a locality. Uh, they are normally represented by water, uh, water uh, and sewage systems. Transports, uh, uh, transport and communication systems, power supplies, talk about buildings uh, in that kind of a, a destination. And then you have superstructures. Superstructures also are important in a given destination, and these are normally structures that are normally, uh, uh, they're normally uh, built above, uh, above the baseline. And the one aspect about superstructure, they can be represented by physical structures in terms of buildings, bridges, talk about border points, airports, ports, harbors, talk about uh, skyscrapers. Those are the examples of super, uh, super structures. 
And then number 10, we have target market. We have target market. And any destination must attract target market. And a target market, these are normally the clients who the, uh, this destination normally, uh, normally eyes or it normally uh, focuses on. And one aspect about target market, target mat uh, market automatically, uh, it automatically can be maintained uh, through uh, good uh, proper marketing and giving quality services and giving standard uh, kind of uh, standard kind of uh, standard kind of uh, um, uh, 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 talk about facilities to this kind of visitors. So we have the, the world top ten touristic destinations, world top ten touristic destinations, and. Um, one aspect about the top 10 tourist destinations, according to the uh, United Nations uh, World Tourism Organization, you find that uh, the, top, uh, the, uh, the tourist destination normally ranked, and uh, this ranking normally comes out because of two kind of directives or guidelines. Number one, the number of international tourist arrival. Then number two, we have international tour, uh, tourism receipts. One, under international tourism arrival, is all about how many, what is the number of tourists that have, uh, that have arrived in that kind of a country from the generating country. So the number automatically tells us about the international, the, the tourist arrival. And then number two, we have international tourism receipts. This is performance based on how the revenue that the country normally gets from these international tourists that arrive in that kind of a country. So the spending power automatically brings out the, um, um, the, the overall effect of the revenue that this kind of uh, this kind of a country collects. So, in short, international tourism receipts is represented by the amount of money or revenue that the country gets from the, the, the international tourism activity. So, we have number one international uh, tourist arrival. So, in the international tourism arrival, I've said it is how many about the number of tourists that are, that have, have, have arrived in, in, in that kind of a country from the, from the, from the, from the generating country. Then one aspect about these arrivals, they're normally affected by, they're normally affected, uh, they're normally affected, or they normally are determined by two factors. One, what type of tourists uh, are, are, are uh, attracted to this kind of a, uh, this kind of a destination? Like I know in Kenya, uh, before, uh, I know before the pandemic, uh, the Chinese were the highest number of, uh, highest number of tourists to, uh, that were coming to Kenya. And then, Number two factor is the average length of stay. How long do they stay? And then, uh, in terms of how many nights are they spending in that particular in, in that particular kind of a country? So these two factors determine the international uh, tourist arrival. So, like if you look at this uh, uh, this uh, 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 display that we have here, one you find that the, the, the top ten destinations. Uh, according to 2018, according to United Nations World Tourism Organization, France was number one but with 89.4 uh, million number of uh, uh, tourists, uh, tourists arriving in that country, followed by Spain at 2.8, USA 79.6 million, and then China 62.9 million, Italy 62.1 million, and then Turkey 45.8 million, Mexico 41.4 million, Germany 38.9 million, Thailand 38.3 million, United Kingdom, we have uh, 36.3 million. So if you look at the comparison from 2017, there is an, increase, uh, an increasing trend of tourists uh, in, this, in this destination. So one aspect about a country, a country will maintain this with respect to how best, uh, uh, in ter uh, uh, how best, uh, uh, the, uh, how best uh, in terms of the goods and services it offers to the tourists, and then the facilities, also they become a factor. And then, if you look at the African countries, uh, I like to look at the uh, I like to look at the, the what I like to look at according to the United Nations World Tourism Organization, Morocco is the leading, followed by Egypt, South Africa, Tunisia, Algeria, Zimbabwe, Ivory Coast, Botswana, and then Namibia, Mozambique, uh, automatically. This is the chronology how it was. And if you look at 2017, and still this kind of a trend is being repeated basically on Morocco. Morocco, there was an increase uh, with respect to 2018 from 2017. However, I know Egypt, uh, it can be seen in two dimensions. African country, but at the same time, Middle East. 
But according to the African ranking, it is number two. And then, if you look at the America destination, USA was number one, led by Mexico, Canada, Argentina, Brazil, uh, Dominican Republic, Chile, Cuba, Peru, and then finally Colombia. And USA was the highest with 79.6 million. And number 10 was Colombia with 39, 3.9 million number of uh, tourists that, uh, that uh, uh, came to that country. And then if you look at the Asia Pacific destinations, Asia Pacific destinations, China was the leading, Thailand, Japan, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Macau, India, Vietnam, South Korea, and number 10 was Singapore. And China was the leading in the 62.9 million number of international visitors, while uh, Singapore had 14.7 uh, 14 million number of international uh, visitors. And then in Europe, number one was France, Spain, Italy, it uh, Turkey, German, United Kingdom, Austria, Greece, Russia, and finally Portugal. France was leading with 89.4 89 million, and then uh, Portugal had 22.8 million number of international uh, international uh, visitors. And then in the Middle East, still Egypt is here, but still Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Egypt, Iran, Bahrain, and then you have Jordan, Israel, Oman, and then Qatar was uh, top 10. And Saudi Arabia was, was having 15.3 million arrivals in, by the end of 2018 in terms of the statistics. And then Qatar had 1.8 million, uh, by the, uh, talk about by the end of uh, 2018. Uh, but I know when things stabilize, I know Qatar will, will, will show a dramatic increase because of the, uh, the coming World Cup that is supposed to be done, uh, that, that, that's supposed to uh, take place in that. And then international receipts, this shows the earnings got from international tourists that come to a, a particular countries. And one aspect, the fluctuation in the receipts shows, uh, it shows us how the, uh, the interplay of the, perfor the performance. And then one aspect, it also uh, can be it can be affected by number one uh, one aspect about it tourism performance in terms of services in that place can affect that number two the extent rate uh, extent rate fluctuation that is how the dollar is in uh, that how the dollar uh, the national currency is uh, how they are the strengths how they are normally uh, how, how they normally fluctuate it cannot uh, automatically affect international uh, So I've only focused on the international, uh, top 10 international tourism earners for the year 2018. Number one was USA with 214.5 uh, uh, US billion dollars. Then Spain was the second. France, Thailand, United Kingdom was number five. Italy is number six. Number seven, Australia. Number eight, German. Number nine, J Japan. Number 10 was China. China had 40.4. US billion dollar uh, earning at the end of 2018 uh, touristic, uh, uh, tourism financial year. So based on the attraction in Kenya, I'll only just uh, list down uh, examples. We have Lower Downs Conservancy, uh, normally known for the uh, Black Rhino. Uh, uh, it's a, it's a, a sanctuary where the Black Rhino was, Black Rhino is normally conserved. And it was, it was um, it was established in 1995 as a cattle ranch. However, it became a sanctuary to, uh, to accommodate wildlife in the, uh, uh, in, um, uh, even up to date. But it is normally known for the endangered uh, uh, black rhino. Mount Kenya National Park, a UNESCO site, normally known because of the fragile ecosystem and the wildlife that it has there. And then we have uh, Savo National Parks. In fact, the, the largest national park in Kenya is Savo East. And one aspect about uh, Savo National Park as a destination in Kenya, it has various attractions. Talk about the Shitani Lava, uh, Shitani Lava, Mzima Springs. Talk about the Big Five of Kenya. Talk about the savannah, the waterfalls that are found there. And then you have them. Uh, I've said mentioned the Mzima Spring that supplies Mombasa with water. It's an attraction site in, in this in this place. And then Amboseli National Park, uh, a park that uh, is normally, according to the Kenya Wildlife Service, normally uh, branded as. Uh, uh, Mount Kilimanjaro Royal Royal Court, because when you go to this uh, to this uh, park, you'll have a view of the Kilimanjaro, uh, Kilima, uh, the Mount Kilimanjaro. Uh, that is, uh, it's found uh, in Tanzania, but at the border of Kenya, uh, 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 at the border of Kenya, uh, Kenya also. And then 
if you look at Lake Nakuru National Park, also a very important, uh, a, a, a very important destination in Kenya, known as the Bird Watchers Paradise. It has about 450 bird species in, Ken in, in uh, bird species. It has a variety of uh, uh, big five uh, examples. They, we have the white rhino, black rhino. They are found the water bug sepals. Variety of birds normally found here. Talk about the delicate Euphorbia candelabra forest. Today is, is facing a uh, very serious threat in conservation. Hell's Gate, uh, rock climbing. Talk about the, uh, the gorges from the Fischer's Tower. Those are the examples from there. And then it's also a, a place where we find uh, the endangered Lamagaya, a bird that is found, uh, that is, uh, it belongs to the vulture, fam uh, vulture uh, family. Mombasa City, another destination in Kenya. It is normally uh, known because of what Jesus, normally known of the uh, Swahili culture. The sandy beaches, the museums, historical places like talk about the Gede ruins, the ruins that are found there. And then um, uh, talk about Fort Jesus, Old Town and Fort Jesus, very, very important. And then talk about Samburu, Shaba. Uh, Sh Shamburu has rare species of wildlife. Talk about the gravy zebra, the Somali ostrich, the reticulated uh, giraffe. Also, uh, you find that it has the uh, uh, Wasonyiro River, also it has cats. Cats also found here like the uh, lions and the uh, 